Hi, I'm Mike. Cow, calf, heifer, hefferette, springer, yearling, stalker, bull, bullock, maverick, steer, free martin, pulled, beef, and dairy. These are some of the sacred words of ranching and farming cattle. Today, we talk about the terminology and what they mean, where the words come from, and why we use them on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> If this is your first time here, welcome and thanks for coming to explore the ranch with us. Please subscribe for more from the ranch, including gardening, ranch down cooking, and everything in between. Cattle, or even cows, is a very broad term. You don't need to really be talking about cows on the ranch at all to use it. The word cow could be referring to female alligators, a camel, or an elephant. Bull is the same way, a male dolphin, or a dinosaur, if you can believe it. And a calf could be a baby giraffe a hippopotamus or a rhino. Luckily, I don't have to deal with keeping all that straight, even though Lincoln is convinced we should have a dinosaur around, I guess just to keep things interesting. So we're just dealing with cattle, and how complicated can it be really? When we first came here to the ranch dropping everything and starting over, I can tell you that I knew there were cows and bulls and calves. And that was about the limit of my knowledge. I was in for a rude awakening the first time someone started talking to me about heifers or stalkers or yearlings. I nodded and smiled, pretended I knew what they were talking about, and realized that I had a lot to learn. I still don't claim to know it all. But when I smile and nod as somebody's talking to me about their pulled cattle or the difference between a Holstein and a Hereford bull, at least I know they're talking about horns and different breeds. Now this may sound totally sacrilegious, but farming and ranching is much like a religion to a lot of people in the industry. Some even call it a call from God. I'm not sure about that, but my ranching career started with a call from Erin as I was sitting at my desk and she was asking me what I thought about going to Wyoming and working on her stepdad's ranch. Then again, we'd only been married for four months. So in a way, it was the boss calling. And as with most religions, if you know the language, then you belong. I guess, you know what, it doesn't even have to be a religion. If you go to Starbucks and order a large, I swear they look at you like you just dropped off a wagon somewhere. Triple, vente, soy, no foam, latte. I don't even know what that means, but I know the words. Hot caramel macchiato upside down, that just sounds messy. So when I started, just like a lot of you, I knew the words, but I didn't know what they meant. And today, we start with the basics. Cows, cattle, or more commonly cows, bovines, most commonly classified as bos taurus, but don't worry about that, that's not gonna be on the test. Cattle are most commonly raised as livestock for meat and dairy animals for milk and other dairy products. But only 60% of a cow is harvested as food. The other 40% ends up in places like lipstick and jet fuel. Bovine insulin from the pancreas is used to make insulin injections for diabetics. Cartilage helps make medicine for people who suffer from osteoarthritis. And lungs are used in blood thinners like heparin. Cow bones and hides are used to create gelatin that gives texture to food like marshmallows and caramels and gummies. Around 10,500 years ago, cattle were originally domesticated in Turkey. And now there are some 1.4 billion cows in the world. And in general, when it comes down to terminology, they're all pretty consistent across the globe with a few differences in definitions. All cattle are cows. Don't feel bad about calling a bull or an uncastrated male a cow. They don't care, even though their owners might, and that may say more about the owner than anything. The language we use, like anything else, is a tool to keep the types of animals, sex, stage development, you gotta keep all that straight. And it's easy to get wrapped up in the terms and forget they're all cows. So we have our bull, a male cow, completely intact and ready to breed. A bull that is castrated is called a steer. Bull calves on the ranch are castrated at branding, and we do this to produce an easier to work with steer calf. Bulls like to fight, especially when they hit puberty, and castrating them calms down their tempers and also renders them unable to breed and keep the, keeping them from trying to breed their sisters in the field. In addition, castrated steers will grow better and faster, leading to a bigger calf at sales time. These steers behind me, we keep back to grain finish for farmer's market. 
A few other terms that uh, refer to bull cows, a uh, bullock, which refers to a young bull, as well as a heifer bull, which can be used as a label to label a bull under three years of old uh, that's normally used to breed cows that are ready to have their first calf. They're smaller, just like the cows, and it puts less stress on the cows during breeding, both physically and I imagine mentally. Another type of animal that we have out here is a lead steer. He's a castrated bull that was not raised to butcher, but he lives with the cows. He was hand fed and raised, and that helps us move the cows around. They're gonna follow him, and usually he has no problem following a full bucket of goodies. Cows are the money maker on the ranch, and they are the main producers. And when it comes to the cows, the terms start to get a little bit more confusing. For us, a cow on the ranch is an adult female who has had a calf. She is then considered to be part of our breeding herd. 80% of the female cows on the ranch fall in this category. They know the routine. They've been around long enough to be good moms, and in a weird kind of way, we trust them. A young female, before she's had a calf on her own and is under three years, three years of age, is called a heifer. And a young female that's only had one calf is occasionally called a first-time heifer. Heifers who haven't had a calf require more babysitting than cows. Consider them just out of their teens. They're more adventurous. They tend to get into more trouble. And when it comes to having their first calf, they don't have a clue what they're doing. Most cows and heifers have that mothering instinct, but heifers still need to learn how to take care of and care for a calf. It's not uncommon for a heifer to wander off and leave her calf and forget where she left it or refuse to care for a calf at all. Also, heifers, because they're first time moms, they tend to have more trouble during the calving process itself and often require human intervention when they can't get their own calf out. Calves are young cattle of both sexes until they're weaned from their moms. And in some areas, they're referred to as weaners then until they're about a year old. In other areas, they might be known as feeder calves or simply feeders. After that, they're referred to as yearlings between one and two years of age. Other words that you're gonna hear us toss around are springers, cows that are close to calving, stalker calves that are purchased when they're weaned and wintered on the ranch and then sold again, kind of a quick turnaround income. Pulled cattle, which are cows without horns, which we have here on the ranch, a maverick, which could be any type of cow that isn't branded, and a free martin, which is a female twin of a bull that becomes infertile due to the sharing of blood supply with her brother in utero. Sounds made by cows are generally called moos. We also refer to it as lowing, but there's a number of sounds that are made by cattle, including bawling and bellowing. Bawling is most common for cows after weaning a calf, and bellowing is the sound a bull makes when he's ready to get to work. When we first decided to make a terminology video, I honestly didn't know how I would turn out. I didn't think I had enough material to make a whole video of just cow terminology. And I anticipated having to venture into the entire ranch and talk about fencing or machinery, pigs, maybe even chickens. As it turns out, the way we talk about and refer to cows is even more complicated than I thought. And I'm sure that I've left stuff out. But I hope this video gives you a better idea of the language of the ranch at least the language of the cows. And it helps you feel closer and more connected to everything that we do here. In the end, no matter how complicated a person wants to make it, they're cows. And they depend on us for everything. If I open the gates tomorrow and let them go free, well, not only would I get a huge ticket from the Sheriff's Department, but I guarantee you that a majority of them would be back tomorrow, waiting for me to come out and feed them and make sure they have water and you know what, that's okay. They depend on us as much as we depend on them. And I think it's a good trade. Coming up this week on The Ranch, Tuesday, join me as we tackle the project list. And together, we're gonna try to get more done. Before you know it, it's gonna be calving season and we're gonna be busier than a mosquito at a nudist camp. So we're gonna try to get as much done as possible on that list before we start calving. Also, Erin's gonna have a new video coming out this week where she starts seedlings that are gonna be going in the high tunnel. The work never stops. It's just the way it is. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. Hit that subscribe button and come explore the ranch life. 
with all of us. We have an awesome community, and I appreciate every single one of you. Find us on Facebook for content you can't find anywhere else. And until next time, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.